All right, guys. Bill, I'm here back with more Fist of North Stars next morning. Eh, it's afternoon. <laughs> but whatever. I don't even know what we're doing right now. That's my issue. So you find four gold. Eight metal scrap. What do I have right now? Then? Mm. Maybe it's not inventory. I have zero rock. Wait, do I need rock? No, I don't. Shit. Like blocks of gold, metal scrap, rusted nail. Um, I only have four. I need twelve, right? So have I just never found any of these other ones? That's not good. Alright, um, well, I don't know. I don't know if I care enough to finish this one, to be honest. Uh, is there an easier way to do this? But, um, yeah, so today my copy of Life is Strange is going to arrive. So that's something. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to arrive until um, until Sunday or Saturday. Thankfully, we're okay. So, where's the thing? It's over here. Um, I guess we'll try to look around here. Maybe that's a thing we should do. Let's get some food. I have to head over to Eden soon. <clears throat> um, yeah, there's that. I also bought Death Loop today. So, that's another game to add to the list. Um, you know, it says we're here. You know, might as well listen to the podcast. I have nothing else to do. No, I, 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 you all make good points. I think you're probably right. That it probably doesn't make a difference either way. But I just think it's funny that at the time, as this happened, you know, most of the audience sees Russell get clowned. And they're like, yes, and everyone's so happy. It's this huge moment. But you know, all the people that are upset now that Rob lost to Rob won on his fourth try and it was a big deal. I wonder if they change their opinion now on this episode. They watch it now knowing what happened. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Just it's interesting to look at it from two different points in time. I think that there's a lot of these things in the season that don't go well for a lot of reasons. So as we are saying, Redemption Island isn't received very well over time. But in turn, a lot of those things get a really compelling season in the sense that everyone's like, oh, well, Boston Rob just came in and schooled a bunch of newbies and won. But it's like, the flip side of the coin is Boston Rob won a season of survival, right? Oh, Russell got, you know, exited out early so entertaining with this Russell is. the other story is Russell was almost was first out on the Zapatera tribe right and then you have the dueling story of they brought in two returnees one was the first out on his tribe the other one won the game right and then you have the whole that Mount Elrod thing in Redemption Island we're like we have Redemption Island so people are going to duel and it's going to be back and forth and, you know somebody may come back to the game it's like we have the whole Matt Elrod story which is um yeah so yeah we got a few more games to play um not very good for the like, to be honest, I wasn't gonna buy fucking um, like Deathloop, but from Best Buy it has a guarantee that yeah, it drops in price. So from like, now on January 2nd, I think it is, or stuff like that, uh, that you can price match or even just straight up return it. Um, and then, uh, but it also comes with a steel book, so I was like, eh, whatever. Well, never. And to I, I still haven't played an arcane game. You know, I own all the Dishonored games, I still don't remember playing them, but I was like, you know, fuck it, let's play Death Loop. It's supposed to be good. Surprisingly. Because Philip is sitting in one of these hammock chairs, 
And because Philip is so fat, it's sagging down, and he can see the glue right in Philip's butt. So, he does point out, Rob says, uh, just because I saw Philip's fat ass sagging the chair down, that's the only reason I saw the glue. So, he goes over and tells Philip, oh, you're going to break the chair, and you can move it, I think there's a screw missing. Philip just moves over, falls asleep in another chair, and it's really kind of a uh, classic reenactment of the scene here in, uh, in Fiji. You gotta get up pretty early in the morning to fool an old cat like me. And Philip literally sleeps as Rob pulls the clue out from where Philip was recently sitting. Yeah, it's interesting that we see like the full face of these returnees in that here we have Rob, who, you know, last time was like, what's it gonna Community idol. I don't know what this is. I don't care what it is. Ends up getting outdone essentially by the idol play of someone like Russell. Now changes his gameplay, finds that idol that's going to continue to assert his dominance in the game versus Russell, who gets again outfoxed in basically every corner here and just goes out of the screen. Yeah. And Rob even has a great quote here. He says, you know, the game is so different this time around. In previous seasons of Survivor, you win a reward, you come back and celebrate. It's like, there's not even any time to celebrate a win anymore, because all people do is look for the idol clue. And he's like, I've ignored the idol in the past, it didn't work out for me, maybe I'll actually try something new this time. So he looks for the idol, he finds, or he finds a clue. Now, he goes on the first idol hunt, but he doesn't find it, he doesn't find the idol until the next episode. But he blames it because the clue is very vague, and it basically says, the idol could be somewhere. Yeah, like under a rock, the island on the island. Oh shit, there's a lot of shit. Yeah, really right, maybe but this is what we're looking for. Yeah. So anyway, that's it for Rob. He's got his clue, he's looking for his idol. But now we go to the end of Russell. And like, I have almost no notes here because Russ nothing happens. Like, it's because such a cry. Cry. He cries. Look at the All right, yeah, so this is everything. Right? Right. Smells right. Yeah, yeah. I was so sad. I oh, this, this is what we need. No, so I'm just, I was just being an idiot. But yeah, so... Russell knows he's gone, he knows what the split's gonna be, he knows he doesn't have an idol, he's like, what the fuck can I do? The only thing he can do is what he did with Tyson, right? Is convince Julie to essentially pull a Tyson and jump over with him. I, I sure hope Julie gives a good confessional about this. Oh, I'm... It is, she does. <laughs> um, no, I don't want to talk about Julie right in the second. What I want to talk about is something we actually like Sandra and... <laughs> This night when he got out, she posted on social media like videos and pictures of her daughter wearing party hats. Like literally had like noise makers. Like they went all out on the stage. So petty, but so funny. I could do that. That's the thing. It's like what's this? You, if you have to pick one person to mess with, do not mess with Sandra Diaz Twine because like she is so many things, including petty. And so she, if you make fun of her, she will grind your bones into dust if you ever... Wait, but if I get this, I can get these two. Grab an enemy yeah, and and that, that's the kind of stuff I'm glad you guys are bringing up on Historians, because other podcasts yeah. wouldn't talk about the historical perspective of what it was like to watch the season as it aired. Yeah, and let's Paul do this, because we get all Sandra's these. Sandra's social media party the night that Russell went out. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, so Russell's only plan here is he, he and Stephanie try to go get Julie on board, which I love that I've got Russell's down. Russell doesn't even know Julie's name. He just calls her the old lady. <laughs> not, not a lot of people know these, each other's names, right? Like, there's going to be one thing that said, like, oh, yeah, the old lady with the uh, with the black hat. Like, uh-huh. people still are not having much regard for each other in terms of names, which it's been a week. Nothing here. I think they know it. There is so much dry mouth going around this right. island. It's crazy. Wow, they really aren't giving water to anybody. <laughs> oh, We're no, no. So four, so anyway, eight, yeah, so they, twelve. They go to Julie. They're like, he votes for us tonight. Bad idea to get rid of Russell. Stephanie's like, Russell always goes to the end. If you're with him, we'll get there. It's like ridiculous. And Julie's like, you know what? I think eight, I should maybe okay. vote yeah, right, for them just tonight. Enough. And because of that, I won't. But maybe I will. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Russell always goes four, to the end. He eight, brings seven, people four. like me. And not, I need twelve I nails. I think I missed that one. <laughs> Yeah, he in no way would choose the young hot girl. Fine nails, is that what it is? Oh, well, especially Rusted nails, shit. Right? We're like, she's saying, you know, oh, um, the majority of the tribe forgets that they're playing it? Survivor. We're getting on so well with Russell's expertise, and David's, you know, trying to talk. He's like, I'm still Rusted talking. Nails. All right, we, we got it. That's Jesus. It. Did she, I always forget, did she get voted in on Cambodia or not? She was in the, the short list, but she did not. Okay, she did not, yeah. But she was, yeah, I mean, she's at least a standout character from the season. You remember her, maybe not for the greatest 
fuck. Uh, yes. Stephanie will not stop yapping for the next couple episodes, but... Yeah, so Russell and Stephanie think maybe Julie's gonna vote for them. Maybe she will, maybe she won't, I don't know. We go to Tribal Council, and sure enough, uh, it's brought out that they threw the challenge and might be gonna convince the challenge. The other anti-Russell quote says, we have some fat on this pod and we can strip it off. Which is and then there's where Stephanie starts to raise the law that they're throwing the challenge. And everyone else... Yeah, that'd be cool if we can finish the game today, or tonight, today. Um, that way I can start Life is Strange next time I play something. survivor the question now is will that come back to haunt you and this is a producer he's like please say yes please say yes please say yes because he wants to do well this is the tribal council where he flat out said hey just so you know uh i have a feeling this is gonna bite you in the ass at merge does he say that i kind of forget but it, it will come up with he literally says to zapatera you're in trouble come merge big prediction for me but i think i'm right all right so jeff is jim early confirmed so, this is where we come to a crossroads here. We're going to eulogize Russell and say our final memories of him. Do you think we have time for a fourth episode? It's been over three hours. I will leave it up to you. I mean, how much longer do you think we'll go? I can do the next episode in ten minutes. It's real quick. Okay. All right. I believe in you, Mario. All right. So, first we'll eulogize Russell, and then we'll start the stopwatch in ten minutes. So, any final thoughts to say about the Mr. Russell Beard? in here the way that he leaves too because i mean that's also the thing is that uh, if we're trying to give our best apartment it's not centerman thing the fact that he does go out in here is uh, ironic okay so we will not eulogize again let's let him get eliminated okay episode four of redemption island uh russell just furious that he was voted out uh, he wants to fish slap every one of them and he goes to the redemption island expecting to see uh franchek and he sees mad like, oh, Matt's here. Oh, fuck. He quits. a great moment. So, Russell meets Matt, and Russell just gets a Well, I like Matt. He's a good guy, but this isn't the real world. The good guy doesn't win. I win. I just want to point this out. When he says, when he got blurred out, he says, I'll be back, you know, and, and I'll be ready. Like, what, what's his plan? <laughs> um, I mean, we don't need, we don't need to talk about it. I just want you to think about it. Well, what's, what's the plan? Bitch slap Here. is his plan. Yeah. That's the only, that's the all as far as he thought. He's gonna win some duel, he's gonna come back, he's gonna bitch slap them, and then he's got a, a unique strategy. He's gonna get two young girls, and they're gonna look like <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Alright, continue. So, uh, this is where Philip is gonna lose his luster. Now, for one episode, everyone in Obatepe is kinda like Philip, but this is the episode where he's gonna start sweeping and waking everybody up and being annoying again. Do we even have the money? Man's explaining everybody, and 
And this is where we're getting another segment where everyone laughing in his underwear. So any goodwill Philip has gained the last episode, he's gonna lose here, and he's gonna it's gonna go really. Oh, I'm literally out of money. This is really were we were we historianing by 2010? Like were we on the air by then? No, you guys started in 2012. Okay. Oh, well, Mike was a stalker. He, Ooh, he, <laughs> you guys, little shade there. Then, then he's, then he's, yeah. Then he's excused because, like, quite literally, we've said from the beginning, like, if the if your tribe is working, work. If your tribe is not working, don't work. Don't be the person doing the opposite thing. Like, I think Philip is so rational and intelligent in so many different ways, and then in some ways, it's just kind of like, what are you doing anyway? Okay. Well, there, okay, there is one important thing that happens in this episode, I kind of forgot about it, where Philip realizes he's annoying all the girls, all the young people can't stand him, he annoys them. So we can only get he half a tank. young people cannot relate to him, which is not quite the problem, but he does say, another side of... You can just, you can just drop, you can just drop young from that yeah. side. But he does say, another side of me needs to emerge, I need a new persona, because this one isn't working. And this is where the wacky guy with the feather will come in later, but he does identify early not fitting in, he might need to do something else. So I just wanted to file that away. He also has a dry tongue he can use when he reads this email and doesn't know how to say Rochambeau. <laughs> okay, so we go to Zapatera. This is the first morning post Russell. It's like a new day has dawned. It's all, the, everything's a little brighter and brighter. The food tastes a little better. The, the mouths are a little less dry. It's just a wonderful day. And Stephanie and Krista look to be checked out. They're not playing anymore. And this is where Ralph is pulls the lines aside, tells that he has the idol. He's like, I told you, I had this game under control. So Ralph is really kind of killing him right now. And that's the entire plot of this episode. And now we go to the And you would think, I don't know, I'm surprised that he waits to tell them. Like, I don't know if they thought there was going to be another well, idol hidden, but let's like, let's go here just like to... Save up, uh, save us from the thing. Might as well talk to him so we unlock this as a fresh one edition. Stephanie is just wielding some sort of weird clutch around Sam. I have the idol. Yeah, perhaps that would have helped. But Ralph tells them now, and all is well. But again, I just want to point out, Ralph is actually killing the game at this point. He honestly is. Alright, dual time. Time for the end of Russell. We go over to, uh, Redemption Island, and it's Matt against Russell, good against evil, the Bible beater, Mr. Ernest, against Mr. Puss filled armpit. And, uh, <laughs> I love this. They get to pick. This is the first time they get to pick who gets to see the duel. This is only the second duel in the game. And Philip wants to go. He basically nominates himself, and he invites Christina, which is <laughs> not really the iconic players you want to be there for when Russell gets eliminated. But on the other tribe, you get Sarita and Ralph. So we will always have the moment where Sarita was there when Russell gets eliminated. So thank God. And what's the duel? This is the second duel. He said the first one was more epic. It was the grabbing the keys with the poles. This one is a little less epic. It's oh, the domino. Domino. Like, literally just went into it. Yes, stack the dominoes on a little uneven platform. Oh, shit. Can get them to fall oh, down all at once. Wins. Another fantastic carnival game. And of course, well, Matt. And like, and like domino. everything, you know, it plays out because Jeff Probst is like, there's trip wires along the way that can shake the thing and... and it caused your dominoes to fall, and it's like maybe the trip wires were tripped during this challenge. And it was a lot longer, but they didn't show us any. You just showed them, you know, <laughs> stacking the dominoes and then knocking them down. Maybe up the yeah. It was just one of those where, like, you know, they were stacking them. Matt goes first, doesn't do it. Then Russell goes, it doesn't work, and then Matt does it again, and it works. It was just gripping television. Let me tell you. There's a trip wire that makes you trip. You know, an airplane may fall out of the sky and land on this. You never know. You just don't know. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Matt tries, fails, Russell tries, fails, and then Matt does it and wins. The very anticlimactic ending of Russell Hands, he's eliminated via dominoes. Yeah, three-way vote in dominoes is the way that Russell Hands loses on Survivor. <laughs> to Ralph and Sarita. Are you the sage of yeah. the desert? So, and the, the big thing is that, uh, you know... As Russell goes through this whole speech, he puts his hat down over his mm. eyes. And when anyone calls me by that name, it means like trouble. trouble. Well, and that's what way. those army of ruin boys call me. Challenge. It's tough to, I, I'm tough to be a quarterback. I've got to run the ball. I've got to catch the ball. I've got to, you know, you're I one of them, I suppose. Which, like, I, I no. like the analogy when he's like, I'm I, looking I'm for cure. I'm playing with you that you have to run the ball, catch the ball. And I'm like, 
If you had more teammates, mm. you wouldn't have to do all those things. You're pretty well <laughs> I gotta find informed. all the idols. I'm the quarterback. I wasn't girls, going that's to it. tell and you anything, but now that this was I the man who on the first day he played Survivor. I don't have much time. Tell me where he is. <laughs> Talking to an old geezer yeah, like me at that time. Then again, I suppose we're all running out of time now. Embarrassing way possible, and you know you have to feel a little, feel a little sympathy for the guy. I am actually in this sense of urgency. You know, it's about sphere you know, I'm not going to sit here and deserve the reason behind right? the tears, but I think the tears are genuine. That's right. If nothing else. Sorry, I don't like know where they're at right now. Survivor in like a year and a half. Like, he you has don't. played so much Survivor in such a it's small amount of time. Like, that has got to be taxed. I only go there if yeah, Lord the tears and are probably real. And I feel bad for, for him with the tears, but it's... What do you mean? It's very fitting that this is the I was more than a guy like servant said, started back off the game when I lived in Eden. And, and that relationship yeah, still but, hasn't again, changed. I am his second uh, pair of know, eyes. I too like, keep watch over Ralph Sphere no, City. Whenever Lord Nadai uh, wants to know, know the situation, I report to him. That's all there is to it. Right, where it's like, Ralph, uh, you know, Russell says, uh, oh, you know, these people are However, so dumb. Russell says, I'm not dumb, 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 I'm not I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't think you make you out of the way. You definitely didn't make you out of the way. I don't think you're the legs and is getting his information from someone else. Whatever the reason, go listen to voices of the people, and maybe you'll start to see the big picture. Fast travel you two fucking hurts, idiot. It's so fucking dumb. And as they're down at the beach, he runs back to so much dumb shit, shit in the woods game. somewhere. But he really just goes and finds the idol and we get this big long scene of for the first time in his career in Survivor, Rob finds a hidden immunity idol. Like a little now, I know again, we're sort of disputing the argument of uh, if Rob was placed on another tribe, would he not do as well? Now that being said, if Rob was on Kasaya, he would not be able to look for the idol because if he said he was constipated, Courtney Merritt would have been right there singing him to sleep. <laughs> I'll come with you. I'll soothe you with my dulcet tones. It's like, no, my my shitter hurts. I need to go. I'll come with you. I will I will soothe the, the savage beast. And then you make it shake up to like, all right, you need me to carry you. So Kyo's side of the ranking is not doing well, but that's expected. Russell versus Bruce. <laughs> and Bruce 
Bruce Bruce gets some, uh, you know, he, he makes like a Zen rock garden in a, in a, in a beach day, and then he's just like, I, I, I really have to, I'm going to try to poop. I'm really going to, I'm not even looking for an idol. I mean, this is something. Well, no, that's the thing, though. I, just do want, I, I legitimately want to rewatch this video anyway, because I, I don't remember the, ex like, I remember the ranking, but I don't remember exactly. Oh, there's another sneak preview for Survivor. I don't know why I care enough. Like, it's literally tonight. But, um, um, up would be the operative word there, pal. If you ride, you get it. Don't Geico motorcycle. Ow! Bring all this up with your personal items. That's just a little bit. I think a lot of people would be jealous to be in our position having been the winning tribe, but it comes with its own set of difficulties. We don't have solidified oh, alliances because we've never gone to tribal council. We can happily say this is final six. We have the numbers, guys. We do be proud of our Luvu. We've won many challenges. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm all in. I think it might just make the most sense for everybody strategically to just like, at least for their first couple votes, just vote together. Keeping this tribe, Lulu 6, is damn near impossible. Are there cracks? The tribe is shattered. Basically, Lulu 6 is dissipating. I'm just trying to keep the pieces together for one vote. But if I can't, we're going to be screwed. I've actually only played the Kiwami versions of these games, so those will be the versions that I will be assessing here. Though, to be honest, when I play the Yakuza series, most of the reason I didn't play the series to begin with is for the main narratives anyway, which have largely stayed the same between those two versions, so I doubt it would make that much of a difference at the end of the day. Also, the reason why I'm only ranking the Kiru Saga here is because I just feel like it makes for the most focused ranking here. There was a thought of adding Like a Dragon to the list, but I do feel like Like a Dragon just feels like such a radically different game than these Yakuza games to warrant being on the list. And also, when we're talking about the spin-offs like Judgment and Yakuza and Dead Souls and stuff like that, again, they're just radically different games and don't really feel right to be on the same list. That, I should say radically different games. Game to rank here, let's get started with number seven. At number seven, the worst Yakuza game in my personal opinion, is Yakuza 3. And I've seen some mixed reactions to Yakuza 3. I, I think there's some people that definitely... Why do I use a red font? I think there's definitely some people that look at it as one of the most underrated games in the series. I did not like Yakuza mm -hmm. 3. And a lot of the reason for that is just because of how the game was structured. I really did not enjoy the time that you spent at the orphanage with the kids. And, like, I did at first. Like, at first, I was actually really happy that we were getting this different style of Yakuza game where we were playing as Kiru dealing with the issues of these kids and it felt like a nice change of pace at first but then it went on and on and on and on and it never really announced it too much and it really always felt to me like Yakuza 3 was kind of just a filler game like in many ways it just feels like, like when I'm playing Yakuza 1 and 2 it feels like those are very important stories to Kiru as a character. Well, with Yakuza 3, this always felt to me like a side story. Like, even when we're talking about the main narrative, the narrative that the end game revolves around with Mine and Joji and all that stuff, like, it really just feels like a plot you would see from, like, a reunion movie than the plot of a main series game. To me, it really felt like they just made Yakuza 3 to make Yakuza 3. It really feels like it serves no real purpose. And to me, the overall plot was just so over the top, even more so than the other Yakuza games with like the involvement of the CIA and this like secret group called Black Monday and all this stuff. It was just so ridiculous to me that I never took this game seriously. So for me, it always landed as the worst game in the Yakuza series. Now at number six, this might be unpopular, and I think these next two opinions will be pretty unpopular. But at number six here, we do have a game that is looked at as one of the better games in the series. We do have Yakuza 5. And Yakuza 5 was tough for me because I was kind 
coming into it expecting to really love it. I mean, we'll talk about Yakuza 4, but like from what I heard, Yakuza 5 was essentially an expanded version of Yakuza 4. And that sounded like an interesting prospect to me. However, I do feel like Yakuza 5 takes what Yakuza 4 does and then just really bloats it. To me, Yakuza 5 felt like a story that was based around Hiru and Haruka. However, we also have the characters of Seijima and Akiyama and Shinada being thrown in there as well. And because Are that the story yeah. just comes out of it becoming really unfocused. I think we'll just and end many points within the game where I'm thinking, like, is this even no, exactly. Why was this here? Like it really feels like they tried so hard to tell like the most complex story that they could, but I think through that they kind of forgot that they were telling a story. I will say that gameplay wise, I did like certain improvements in this game. I think each of the characters did have different fighting styles and that did add a bit to the game here. Plus, also, each of the characters have their own different right. world to explore. I just feel like they 